is Julian Torres, and I want to speak to the men about this cultural idea that to be successful in life, you have to be able to go through life on your own. A big component of it is like this, this stigma that as a man, and we do this to ourselves, like men do this to other men, where like as a man, you need to be like this big, tough, like macho person. And like, you need to be the one who's like providing, you need to be the one who um, is gonna be like the rock and the foundation for everybody around you. At the end of the day, that's not a healthy mindset. You know, and, and it, it holds you back from a lot of the blessings that God has for people and it has for you. Like that comes from the idea of, you know, like I need to be in control. Like I need to make sure that in order for me to achieve these goals or these things in life, I need to have full control over what's happening. And you're at the end of the day, you're not letting the Lord take over. You're not letting God control and move in your life. Part of it too is cultural upbringing, you know? Um, being raised and born in, in a different environment puts you in a situation where you need to have control in order to just operate on your day to day. Sometimes you, you need to have control in order just to stay safe if you're in, in a toxic or a very unsafe environment. And, and that has a lot to do with wanting control and having this feeling and this 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 idea that you have to have like this strong like facade in front of you you know like growing up for me like i i'm, I'm latino so there's this this understanding and this this kind of unspoken concept that uh as a man like you can't you can't be showing feelings you can't be showing emotions you do any of those things like you're seen as weak automatically and that just holds you back so much from just life in general you you grow up in a situation where for me like i was i was born and raised in the city and so growing up in that type of environment it, it's one of you see you see these adults that you look up to or you just see in the neighborhood and you, you see them as this strong like this rock for the people around them you think like, yep, that's the ideal. That's how men should be. Ultimately what happens is you don't realize like the storm that's brewing underneath the surface. You don't know what's happening to them in their day to day because they're not sharing, they're, they're not opening themselves up to those experiences. It just builds and builds and builds until, I mean, unfortunately sometimes people break, you know, sometimes people don't break and they go their whole lives like this, but they're just this cold and, and firm person the idea of being a man and being independent it's this idea that like as a man you are you're you're, you're a lone wolf you know like you're the, <laughs> you're like on this island by yourself and that's what society like looks up to like that's what it encourages and that's what like all men need to be and growing up like you see enough men in your life doing that and you see uh, people around you or men around you doing that and you realize like oh okay this is normal when in reality it's not what happens is you kind of grow up and you and you mature and you have this idea that in order to be independent and to be a man this is how I need to behave you know and so anytime you have any type of emotion or anytime you feel any way you immediately start to suppress it you know you, you take it and you're just like this isn't normal, this isn't the way like I was shown like men should behave, like I need to suppress this because like real men don't do this. A story that contradicts that that idea is something that happened uh, several years ago. And so it was with Adventure Kids and it was uh, called Tribe Night. And so it was a night where fathers would have a night with their sons and they had done everything outside. They had like different like, like uh, 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 like different like activities for the kids to do with their fathers and there was one where they were trying to light a fire you know and then they would put it out but there was one instance where uh the fa this father had helped his son start the fire and then they put it out and as they were putting it out he had said this quote and he had said the thing to remember about fire is that when you're putting it out you spread out the fire to make it go out quicker and easier. That's why it's important as Christians to stay together and fellowship with one another. You see, the enemy tries to separate us to push us further away from the warmth of Christ. So it's important, especially for men, to stick together, fellowship, and build one another up in the Lord. 
And that quote has just stuck with me for years just because of how accurate it is. It's so important that as men that we need to stick together. It literally reinforces this idea that you can't be an island, you can't be alone. Like you need to be able to be accepting and allowing others to come in to be able to accept the warmth of Christ, to be able to accept like God in your life. The verse that kind of like goes along with this is Proverbs 27, 17. And so, uh, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And it, it's, it's biblical in the fact that you can't be alone. You have to be with someone else. You have to be able to fellowship with someone else. You have to be able to walk through life with someone else. As, as men, we have to be able to do all those things together. We need to be able to build each other up in the Lord. You can't just walk through life as in, on an island by yourself and expect everything's going to be okay. The way that I've seen this verse play out in my life um, was probably about a year and a half ago. I had a family member who died. You know, they, uh, they were very close to me and kind of put me down a spiral, you know, and it kind of just put me in a situation where I was pulling myself away from like friends, family, you know, even my work at one point, it was impacting. It put me into a situation where I mentally thought that this is how I need to deal with it. Like I need to be alone, that I can't just go and talk about these things because no one's going to listen. And I knew that that was like the enemy speaking. And so it was several months after it happened, I literally had just said to, to Jonathan Sigmund, and I was just like, hey, like I need help. He got me in contact with uh, Mr. Ayacuchi. And for months now, uh, Mr. Ayacuchi and myself have been meeting on a weekly basis just to be able to, just to talk and, and to fellowship and just to process things. It's an example in my life of how iron sharpens iron. Like you can't just go and expect for your life to be okay after experiencing something traumatic and just think that everything's gonna be fine at the end of the day. You know, it impacts so much more than your life, in your life than it does anything else. And it put me in a position where I wasn't praying. You know, I wasn't reading my Bible. I wasn't doing devotionals. I wasn't just spiritually spending time with the Lord. And throughout that time, of uh, talking with Mr. Ayacuchi, I've realized that like I'm missing those things. And as I've been slowly reintegrating a lot of that back into my life, I realize how much I've missed it and how important those things are to me. I feel like if I didn't have that opportunity to be able to, you know, tell somebody that I need help and be able to tell somebody like, or be able to talk through those things with somebody, I wouldn't have been able to be where I'm at currently in my life. As someone who's gone through this, like you have to admit to yourself that you need help and you need to understand that it's okay to ask for help. One of the scariest things in that whole process for me was admitting that I had a problem and I have to ask for help. You know, I think a big, a big thing for that and a big thing that we struggle with, that I struggled with, was just kind of going through my day to day. For the most part, most people had no idea what I was going through. That I was able to function on my day to day as if nothing was wrong, as if nothing was bothering me. But on the inside, it, it was different. Reaching out to someone is definitely going to be what you're going to want to do. It's what I did and it's probably one of the best things I've ever done. So when you've made the decision to reach out to somebody and to talk to somebody, one of the first things you can do is actually email the church. That's what we're here for, that's what the church is here for. And you can email the church at info at rcalvary.org. And you can ask just to schedule a meeting with the pastor to be able to just talk about your problems, you know, talk about whatever's inside of you. There's more to life than just walking through life alone and wanting to experience life together and as a community and allow Christ to be able to enter into your life. You need that community of other men just to even be able to fellowship with each other. My last words for you would be that I encourage you to take that brave step of engaging with community. That's my story. Thank you.